Hello everybody and welcome to part 19 of our Practical Flask tutorial series. In this video we're going to now go back to our login and wrap that up and finish that in this video and then we'll have a full registration and login process. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Because uh, that's actually kind of a, a user system is one of the more difficult things that you'll have to build. Other than that, um, other stuff gets much more easy and much more enjoyable. <laughs> so anyways, uh, let's go ahead and hop into it. So we're going to go into init.py and find our login page which is right here. Now hopefully I don't forget but I might forget to cover it uh, but there's also as you'll find or as you've seen um, hopefully I'll remember maybe after this one we'll cover it but after you log in you shouldn't be able to log in again right so after you log in first of all you would get rid of login and you would replace login with a logout button uh, or you might display the username, something like that. Uh, but you would also, if someone was to go to the login screen anyways, or the login page, it it wouldn't lead them here to log in. It would say, you're already logged in, something like that. And I'll show you guys how we can use the uh, various decorators, but login required will be the decorator that we'll use to protect pages. So you can actually require login. Uh, you can actually require a lot of stuff uh, so you can protect like admin pages, you can also protect uh, pages that require uh, the user to be a subscriber. So if, if you have like some sort of paywall or something like that, you can use um, this methodology here to actually protect against uh, or protect pages and only give them to someone who is say a subscriber or an admin, right, ACP pages, that kind of stuff. So let's finish the login. So first of all, uh, we can leave the if request.method equals post. That's totally fine, but pretty much the rest of the stuff here, we can also leave this if, uh, well, let's just, here, let's just gut this thing. So if the request method is post, what do we want to do? So first of all, uh, if it is post, well, first let's do, okay, up here, before we get to the if, we're going to try uh, C and con equals connection. That should not fail because uh, we've tested that before, but just in case it did, we would handle that. Then we get to the if request.method equals post, what do we want to do? So, first of all, we are going to say that uh, the, let's see, we are getting get post. Okay, so the data, we're going to be looking for some data. So, uh, we want to run really quick c.x oops c.execute and then the query that we want to execute is select all from users where username equals uh, percent at percent s okay that's the end of the query and then what will what is percent s well percent s is thwart again we have to thwart it because we are checking the database for this username and what is the username it's whatever the person attempted to type in that box so we'll thwart it and then we do request.form username like so okay and then uh, to get that username we can just do data equals c dot fetch one uh, and then the s second uh, index there and that would be the username or actually I'm sorry that's the that's going to be the hashed password of that username so we're selecting everything from the table users where the username is equal to the thwarted va value of whatever the username was that that person passed through the resulting data that we're interested in really is c.fetch1 uh, the s second index uh, which is actually the third value, which is their password. So we had username, email, password. Uh, so that's going to be the password, or at least the hash. So then what we can ask is like our previous script, it would be if SHA-256 underscore crypt dot verify. If that's the case, remember this returns boolean, true or false. Request dot form password. So here we're hashing the password that they've entered. So we're comparing this, compare what, to the hash uh, data. So data is the hash of that password. So we're verifying that those are uh, starting from equivalent uh, equivalent starting data, basically. 
if that is the case, okay, we can then say a couple of things. One is session logged in uh, equals true. <clears throat> and then we can also say the session username is equal to request.form username. And then we could also flash something like you are now logged in. And uh, we can then do return redirect. And then I would just redirect them to URL for dashboard like we did before dashboard. And this is where you could also add other things to their session. So you could say session, um, I don't know, if you had admins, you could say session admin equals true, or session rank two equal, or rank equals two, or stuff like that. You can add all kinds of stuff to their session and, and store it in the session cookie. Flash, uh, you're now logged in. We return the redirect. Now, if they posted, but this doesn't check out, then they've entered the wrong password. So then we would just say else error equals um, invalid credentials, try again. And then uh, we did do, we made a connection and all that. Uh, so we go, wanna go ahead and do gc.collect. Uh, then we're going to return render template and this template here will be login.html. And coming on down. Oh, and then error. We'll add the error. Error equals error. After that, we've done our try. Oh, we, I guess we left all this stuff here. So, uh, so yeah, this will work here. Okay. That should be the login page. So let's go ahead and save that. Hope that that worked. Ref Fresh Apache there. Let's open up. Oops, wrong button. Uh, we do this. Our website, at least it loads for now. We'll go ahead to head to the dashboard. We'll go to the login page. Let's just do 5 and 55. Check that. Uh, I'm not seeing any error. I'll have to. Oops. Let's, uh, we should see an error there, though. I'm not quite sure why we're not. Let's do, um, I made an account sentdex and gave it the password of five. So we are logging in. We don't have a log out. And then here's an example. Now we're letting ourselves log back in. Um, where is our invalid credentials? Let's try sentdex real quick and then with the wrong password. And we get invalid credentials. Um, let's go to our init. So this, so if this returns nothing, so if the username just doesn't even exist, we're not getting anything from it. So data equals C. So you could add something like this. Um, if len, or wait, what was it? If int data, wasn't that the thing that we use for registration? Uh, yeah, if int, so let's take this, we'll come up here, and then we can basically say if uh, int x is equal to zero, let's try that, let's say error invalid credentials, credentials, try again. It's usually best to treat um, either like if even if the user let's say you've got a couple of instances right one is the username might not exist and the other one is the username exists but that's the incorrect password you can treat them differently you can say incorrect password try again and then if if the username manner doesn't exist you could say that username you know we didn't find that username in our system but I think it's better to leave them all as saying invalid credentials because then the person doesn't really know, like if they're trying to hack, they don't really know is the username the problem or is the password the problem. So let's restart real quick uh, and let's see if we, we're able to get away with uh, what we just attempted there. So let's just refresh a couple times, go to login. Man, we're still not getting our, uh, what the hell? Invalid credentials, try again. 
if x this might maybe this is what's failing here right okay I know what's happening well I think anyways because where username because this is probably resulting in an empty set so fetch one two is probably what's failing so maybe you could do and then that's resulting in this exception uh, and in fact here here well, here's what we can do then so that's resulting in the exception and then we can just basically say any exception that happens on this page error equals that and let's try this one last time we'll confirm the resubmission there we go so invalid credentials try again okay Whew. okay so now that's basically our login system I'm not really sure what else to cover regarding that other than with a proper user system you can also change password so or you can change password or you can also do forget password and you get like new new little passwords sent to your email and you log in and you have to change your password that kind of stuff we can do something like that too uh, I might cover that way later on down the road but I figure I kind of think like for a basic website you do nowadays you need a login system so I still I do consider user logins a, a basic thing that you need to cover and I suppose once you have a user login you should have a way to change password you should have a way to uh, uh, for you know some sort of forget password thing or something like that but I think that's a little more advanced than I want to cover at least in these initial videos so we've done that and now I think the next tutorial will probably cover login required or at least something that sh that handles the fact like if the user's already logged in they should see this should be a log out button and sign up should be gone right so if they're already logged in you get rid of these buttons and you replace it with a uh, probably like a log out button and then if they're already logged in the login page shouldn't load it should just be an empty or it should say like you're already logged in something like that uh, so we want to use that and then we could also use that to protect pages that same methodology anyways to protect subscription pages and all kinds of fun stuff so anyways, that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you have any questions or comments up to this point, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.